Hello and happy 2016 Labor Day weekend from the Victorian Woodshop. This is Tom Fredrickson. It's been a little while since I had a chance to do one of our monthly videos uh, for our newsletter here on Facebook. From Labor Day, um, you know, Memorial Day to Labor Day is kind of our busy season and it's all hands on deck and there, there just isn't a lot of time for this. But end of the summer, uh, Labor Day weekend's here and, you know, life's starting to get back to a little bit normal, more of an even flow. You would think a lot of the letters that I get are about, uh, Tom, I got this woodworking problem, uh, I want to do this restoration. No, 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 no. It's all about Vladimir, the uh, little kitten that wandered up on us a couple of months ago and decided to be our shop cat here at the Victorian Woodshop. Uh, you know, I put a picture up and uh, everybody, everybody likes cat pictures. Well, uh, Vladimir's doing just fine. He turned into a lousy shop cat, doesn't want anything to do with it. It's too noisy and dusty and dirty back there. So he sits down in the office on Linda's lap all day. And if you're calling in to make an order, trust me on this. He's sitting by the computer or on Linda's lap, but he's doing just fine and uh, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for strays, what, what can I say? Today I want to talk about something, uh, two, two products actually, but it's more of a tip and it has to do with installation. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, the post, Put, putting a bracket up or anything on your home. You're going to find that if you're lucky, your post and your top board, your railings up there are going to be a nice true 45 degree angle so that anything you buy, you know, it's going to pop right in there and a couple little small finishing nails and away you go. But a lot of times over the years, you'll find your porch or your interior or anything, uh, even your roof line has moved just a little bit may not even be able to perceive it with the eye, but it has moved. So you'll, you'll go put something up there and you might have a little gap here or a little gap somewhere. Not to worry. That's why they make wood filler. Now, I, the, I brought this product out. I hate things that change in the woodworking industry. Uh, inertia sets in. You work, you work with something for decades. You know how it sands. You know how it stains, how it paints, how it, how it holds up. If you get something that works, you don't mess with it. Um, that trial and error period getting things going is, is incredibly per But <clears throat> something that has changed in the way of wood filler is they have gone to a plastic based wood filler. And uh, this, the product I'm holding right now is made by DAP, D-A-P. Uh, you can find it pretty much any hardware store or, or any big box retailer. And it says right on the box, plastic wood. And what's different about it is it's got a little, it's more of a creamy texture. And I wasn't real sure about it until I started using it and gave it some really good experimentation. But this is, this is one of the, the products that I'm going to go ahead and recommend. Uh, it dries well, it sands great, it's, it's less gritty than the old wood fillers that were out in the market. Uh, it's a little more liquidy. I, I think than, than what we're used to, a more solid type thing. But that's okay because it dries quickly and um, it, it's just a better product, I, I have to admit. So what you want to use this stuff for is when you, once you get it up installed and you're basically it's in position, you can take this wood filler and just use your finger or whatever and fill in any of those cracks. And then when it's dry, use a little detail paintbrush and you know, it's going to be invisible to the eye looking up there. So that takes care of that, filling up those cracks. Item number two. You've got your, your item in, in the spot. You've done your little wood fillers. It's, it's, it's a nice, nice look and, uh, and you're happy with it. Now, this, this, is, this is going to separate you from a vast majority of, of people out there. This is another DAP product, but it's, I just like DAP but there's a number of different products you can use. Um, a white exterior caulking, either clear or white. Uh, they make a variety, countless varieties of this exterior caulking. And in your particular local area, check with your local hardware store. I, I suggest staying away from the big box stores and go to your local um, hardware store. Uh, the guys and gals down there are gonna know a lot more about what works in your particular locale 
for your weather and they'll have a different recommendation for you. Extremely inexpensive, a, few, a couple dollars for a tube of this and it'll, and it'll last forever. So you're up there, take a bead of the caulking and with your finger run it along the edge where it meets your post. If you do that, that's going to keep water from getting behind your bracket and the post. And the, the danger to any of this stuff is standing water. So if you do that, that's going to seal it from the elements. And if you check the back of your paint can, I, I think I talked about this in my last uh, video. I'm a big fan of the Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore uh, varieties. There might be a couple other really good paint companies out there. I apologize if I didn't mention them and if you guys want to write me uh, I'll be happy to mention you in the future. future. But if you look in the back of, uh, I just bought a, a gallon of good Sherwin-Williams paint recently and just in the last 20 years it has changed so much that uh, you know you look at the back of the can they're guaranteeing that paint for 50 years or more. Um, so you, you use a good paint on this, stay away from the, the hardware store, the big box paints, and you'll, you, you should never have to touch any, any of this ornamentation that, that you put on your home at all. But those are my two tips this time. It doesn't cost anything to do, and it's one of those things where if you do this during the installation, it, it'll just save you so much grief 10, 15, 20 years down the road, and protect your investment and make everything just wonderful. It's also good for interior type stuff too. <clears throat> All right. Another item I want to talk about today <clears throat> is restoration. It, it's not as big of an item here as I would like it to be, just because I think it's a it's a reflection on how our own society has gone over the last couple of generations. We don't repurpose things or have an appreciation of what was there before. It's what's quick and easy. And uh, a number, uh, I want a big shout out to Carl in upstate New York and you're going to be seeing a big spread on him here um, probably in the spring. He's got a bed and breakfast in that he is rebuilding from the ground up. Uh, I, I want to call it a bed and breakfast. It was more of a hotel uh, on a lake and a resort and uh, turn of the century and he is completely redoing it and trying to use the original items. And he sent me this. <clears throat> I don't know if it's showing up well. This was one of the original brackets there. It's uh, made out of who knows what wood. Uh, but it's thick. Notice the thickness on that. Good two inch thick. These things were hand carved well over a hundred years ago. Back when wood was cheap and you had these big slabs and there were craftsmen that could do this stuff, um, you know, chisels and uh, um, no electricity and that kind of stuff. Well, th th those skills are long gone. Nobody could afford to pay the labor. And you can't buy the two inch thick one anymore. You would have to have it milled. Now to have something like that, can it be done? Sure. But to have it done in this day and age with the price and the cost of wood, to mill down a, a big slab of wood into a solid block of wood, uh, j just to get your raw material, the, the cost would just be so prohibitive that it just isn't going to happen anymore. So I asked him to send, take off one of the, the brackets and send it to me so that I could make a template out of it. <clears throat> but I want to show you what he's working with. It's just completely all torn up, covered with paint. There, there must be 20 layers of old paint and uh, junk on this thing absolutely horrible condition but then there's parts of it broken off but if I got something like this I can turn this into this a nice clean template modern template that I can put on machinery and just make these it's no different once I have this it's no different than anything else that I make it's just a matter of getting to a template form. And of course, once I get one of these, I can reproduce them over and over and over and over again. But nice and clean, it will look, it will look, it will look just, just like the old one. Now to get to the thickness, <clears throat> those old ones and the posts that these are going on are not your modern home posts or four to six inches. I mean, these posts were like eight inches wide, huge old beams really going up. 
and that's what required that two inch thickness. More modern homes, a four inch post, a one inch thick bracket is fine. You don't need to go any thicker than that, which is everything that I saw on the website is geared to that. And these special ones, um, we go ahead and custom produce them. Now, how do you get to that two inch thickness? There's no two inch thick wood. And I already discussed milling it down, it's almost impossible to do. So I have to make two one inch thick brackets and marry them together. Now when you marry them together, I use exterior glues and pin nails. And then when the pin nails are in, I use this type of stuff and cover over the little pin nail holes and then sand everything down, seal it and prime it so that when you get it, it looks like one solid piece of wood. The only difference is down the center, because you are putting two together, you're gonna to get a little line. Um, that tends to go away when you paint it and you can, you know, I do some stuff here and you can even do some stuff there if you want. But it's not something that should preclude you from being able to do it. It's a small price to pay to keep the price down in a reasonable level. And my goal is to actually be able to do it. So that's how you do a workaround on these old restorations of the big items. <clears throat> See, it's easy. You can do it. Just pull something down. And even, even if you tear it apart, it doesn't matter to me if it breaks and it, it's in pieces because I'll, I'll assemble it here and put it in some sort of a, a, a deal to where I can turn it into a finished pattern. And I'll go ahead and finish up the um, one thing I wanted. To, that bracket is so old, it is just, just touching it. Parts of it are just falling apart here. I want to start doing more of the videos here. Um, I, the text is dead. Um, I do enjoy putting the pictures up here on Facebook. Please keep sending them. But I want to try something a little bit different, and I'm going to start doing some video type things. If you've done a restoration, uh, if you've got one of the Victorian bed and breakfasts, if you've got a Victorian home, do me a favor, and all the people that check in here, and it will be vastly seen, send me a video. Uh, a little home tour. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. We're not, none of us here are, are fancy people. Um, not to insult you, maybe you are a fancy person, but you know what I mean. Take a tour, take, a, take your, your cell phone around, whatever. Send me a YouTube link and I can take it off of YouTube, that's no problem. And I'll go ahead and incorporate it in, in one of these videos. And people really like to see what other people have done. You should be proud and a big swing around back to Labor Day. My salute to the, the average American homeowner who's up there sweating on ladders, working away, restoring this stuff to make it look nicer, but you take pride in it. And I think any of us that own a Victorian structure realize very quickly that we're just caretakers of these properties. It's our history here in the country. And we have a, you know, once you own one of these things, you'll understand what I'm saying. We have sort of a responsibility to keep them up and, and bring back uh, some of the glory that was on there. So, and and it's, it's, I know I make it sound like a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. And although the work is never actually done. All right, I, I don't want to run this video too awful long. But uh, do send in the videos, and don't worry about being too slick or, or anything. Just uh, let's see what you've done. Uh, if you've got something you're, you're kind of proud of on that, uh, let's go ahead and share it with people. And uh, go ahead and email it to me. For right now, this is Tom Fredrickson with the Victorian Woodshop, and saluting all you guys on uh, Labor Day weekend who are out there uh, working on your homes.